Hello and welcome to this uh, very exciting panel uh, discussion where we'll, we'll try and understand the possible digital advertising opportunities um, and the methods, uh, wiser ways for brands to spend their marketing budgets uh, with caution in this uh, post second wave era. So as the first wave, you know, uh, disrupted businesses across all sectors, uh, marketers faced very complex problems and hundreds of challenges. Um, and just when the markets were recovering, we were hit with the second wave of uh, COVID-19. So the market further observed significant changes uh, in customer behavior and purchase patterns, uh, proving to be an even bigger challenge for the brand marketers. Uh, so on the, on the panel today, we have with us uh, Prabhkiran Singh, uh, who is the founder and CEO of Wavekoof.com. Uh, Satvik Vishwanath, he is the CEO and co-founder of Unocoin. Uh, Sudhir Kamat, he is the CEO and co-founder of Nine Stacks and Ungli Games. Uh, Samrit Das Gupta, VP Marketing and New Brands from Bombay Shaving Company. And Siddharth Dabade, who is the Managing Director of MIQ. All right, so I am Rahul, uh, Rahul Puri and I will be the moderator for today's session. Uh, to start with, uh, first of all, I'm very interested to know from all of you uh, in what ways did this uh, rapid shift, uh, I would say dependence on digital marketing affect your brand and marketing strategies. Uh, Prabhkiran, we'll start with you uh, and then uh, Sudhir can join in and then Samrit can uh, give his views on this. Sure. Uh, so uh, I would put it down uh, in two ways uh, it affected. Uh, one is a quantitative, the other is the qualitative aspect. Uh, the quantitative aspect, the way I, I would put it is uh, that in the short term, there was a big opportunity. Uh, I think most of the advertisers would have experienced last year when um, the first wave happened. Uh, since most of the businesses were shut uh, in the short term, which would uh, be April to July, uh, you didn't have uh, the uh, airlines uh, operational, you didn't have uh, the, the travel segment operational. Uh, so almost 80% of the businesses uh, were shut. Uh, luckily, the the e-commerce and and the entire D2, D2, uh, D2C segment was operational. So at that point of time, uh, because people were not buying the online inventory of ads, the ad rates uh, were cheap. And I think uh, many players took advantage of that. Uh, but at the same time, uh, what we started forcing uh, at that point of time was uh, that these ad inventory in the long term now is going to become very expensive. Uh, because technology and the digital platform was always underrated and underutilized. Uh, all the legacy brands, uh, everyone had the questions. Uh, every industry had the questions. Will the industry go online? Everyone had the question that, uh, do they really need to go uh, online? Uh, uh, will online be ever profitable? So many people were staying away from it. But COVID uh, made it a time and the answer for everyone is going to be yes now. And now everyone is going to come online and is going to eat into the ad inventory. And... Uh, so, so our horizon was that uh, in six months, we'll have a good sweet point where inventories will be cheaper. But in two years, three years from now, uh, this is going to be an era where the ad inventory is going to be really expensive. Hence, rather than focusing on performance marketing, uh, we also start focusing on how do we actually diversify and not be dependent on performance marketing, on buying traffic. Uh, how do we craft a, a brand which has a narrative where people are coming organically? Uh, we always had this focus, but now it was... Uh, uh, the, the, trans the transition was supposed to be more transformational now rather than incremental. So these were the things that uh, we were uh, dealing with. And, and then we made some strategies which can uh, take on uh, in, in uh, remaining discussion. Uh, for us, obviously, we are an online gaming company. So for us, uh, fundamentally, acquisition has always been online uh, even before the lockdown happened. But I think what the lockdown did is that it uh, just, uh, I think, gave us much more of an opportunity to scale up acquisition. Uh, the other thing that happened is because people had much more time on their hands, obviously they were spending that much more time uh, playing games, uh, including on our platform. So that kind of changed some of the behaviors. So we actually realized that, for example, unlike pre-lockdown when people would mainly play in the evenings, uh, now people were actually playing through the day. So we also then got an opportunity to target our existing users for new times. Um, so that was partly through ads, etc. targeted then also through direct communications, mailers, WhatsApp, SMS, all of those things. Um, overall, I think in the last year, year and a half, uh, definitely a lot of customers have a much deeper now equation relationship with the brand. 
uh, and I think that's one big positive which has come. But I think what Kiran was saying does uh, does sort of trend. They actually the costs have started increasing quite significantly now as well, and uh, therefore I think a switch from more performance marketing to maybe more brand oriented uh, spends also is now beginning. I think is needed. So Rahul, here is where I'm coming from, right? I think Prab and Sudhir have already covered two of the most important pieces. One is uh, that brand becomes more important than just focusing on performance marketing. That's one. Uh, second piece is that we need to relook at the way we have been spending money. Inventory is getting more expensive. Inventory is getting more cluttered. More brands have emerged in the D2C space in the last probably two years or year and a half, if you were to look at it, than they have in the last five years. Yeah, and and that's staggering from a number perspective because it's the same categories and more people have come in the same categories with similar products and everyone wants to fight the same game. It's difficult and it's getting more complicated for marketers across the board. Um, there were two inflection points according to us from a men's grooming perspective. The first inflection point is that people want more entertainment in life. So people are spending far more time on Instagram and YouTube searching for things to, that are just, uh, that is sort of no brainers, right? Uh, you're going through a tough time at work, you're going through a tough time in terms of health and family, you just want something that entertains you. So as a brand, can you become a part of their entertainment cycle by not just selling the product, but you know, it's something that, for example, both Sudhir and Prabhkaran's brands do really well, uh, which is about entertaining people, right? Um, we are trying to do that. Uh, we are not just about grooming, but we want to make sure that people know the best practices in terms of grooming. Um, so that's one of the things that we have start, started to do. The second inflection point is the trust indicators that the brand has. Now, the trust indicators have gone far beyond just saying that, hey, I'm a brand that's been around for a while. How's your packaging? How are you, dis how are you sort of you know, fulfilling my orders? Is there a safety sanitization protocol in place? Are you making sure that all the facilities that you have are well taken care of from a COVID perspective? These are all things that people are starting to really look for. Are you chemical free? Are you SLS and paraben free, for example, right? Uh, people have become more concerned about the, what they are putting on their bodies a lot more. So while there's the entertainment piece, there is also the discerning capacity in people. Now, how do we as marketers and people who are buying media solve for both these things? You need to buy trustworthy media and you need to buy and you need to create disruptive content. Uh, not the easiest thing in this world to do, especially when you're in lockdown and working from home. Other panelists here. So, I mean, we are more looking at how a company which is, I mean, which was involved in something physical have uh, have considered uh, to, to be more active in the digital. But in our case, our industry is a little different. So uh, we at UnoCoin, we run uh, a platform for people to buy and sell Bitcoin in India and many other cryptocurrencies, etc. So so for us, I mean, the digital marketing has been around for maybe more than a decade and such. And uh, this, this pandemic has definitely uh changed i mean has pretty much changed the way that people should be looking at uh, market marketing the business have to change their approach uh, from say on field to on home so in our case uh, because we were already like online uh, and everyone was already staying home we could take advantage of that uh, so telling people about how to how to invest into cryptocurrencies and such because a lot of people who also lost the jobs were looking at um, the alternative modes of uh, could be investing or could be earning etc and we also took the advantage of organizing uh, the online events discussions and, and and meetings and such things and uh, and now that everyone is at home we are more looking at providing them more and more digital content of, uh, for their consumptions and such so yeah this is pretty much how we have continued optimizing and we have continued changing our narratives of how how we were uh, marketing before to what we are trying to do it is it is just that the push online has uh, you know become literally like uh, maximum and now it's more about creating user friendly content than uh, tr tr just trying to you know keep it uh, uh, more like interactive i think right thank you satvik uh Siddharth, uh, being on the other side of the fence, can you tell us uh, which marketing channels prove to be more efficient? What worked more for your clients? I mean, what has your client come back to you for? Yeah. So, um, Rahul, as you know, I mean, we are a programmatic specialized partner for agencies and for our clients. And what we are seeing is that uh, the last decade was all about search and social and performance marketing in many cases, right? Because brands use digital, they started with search, they adopted 
social as well. They used it for getting revenue, doing performance marketing, uh, exactly what panel talked about as well. And uh, uh, what our experience tells us from other markets also, like more advanced uh, from a digital perspective, US or UK, that uh, that is this is a journey, and um, you know uh, these countries uh, who have been on digital for a longer time, they shifted from search and social to uh, you know search social plus programmatic plus other channels kind of thing as well. So uh, I think India was also on that journey, and it just accelerated quite a lot during these times. Uh, and very interesting points uh, from the panelists about the inventory currently being cheaper or there was a window of opportunity when the inventory was much cheaper and then now it is probably getting more expensive and I think I would also put it to the uh, or maybe I will put it in this way that you know uh, right now a lot of brands are very very uh, dependent on search and social for doing their uh, performance marketing and uh, now they will be looking at display and video more as well uh, and i'm saying more purely from a digital advertising perspective of course there are other channels of marketing any which ways but as you go deeper into display and video uh, because beyond a point search and social becomes saturated and becomes quite expensive uh, that is where uh, you know the best way to buy display and video is through programmatic and that's what we are seeing Meaning we we were anticipating a level of demand but we are seeing much higher level of demand because of uh, the digitalization which is taking place and brands are now looking very uh, in a very focused way on uh, branding and that's where display and video comes in and i would say another thing is that you know uh, in india it is still a market where performance is important and uh, you know what i would say is that even on digital if you are doing branding uh, how do you measure performance because of the branding is a important area for uh, all the brands to consider. Uh, and uh, that's where, how can you use your own data to understand your consumer better? And then, uh, you know, use that to target in a better way. Uh, and then innovations like how do you time uh, so that, you know, when the consumer demand is good for your uh, business, then you increase the intensity of your campaigns. And when the consumer demand is low and that can be done in real time, uh, you know, then you decrease the intensity of your campaign. So some of these innovations will also help in getting further efficiencies on, you know, every uh, every next dollar which you're spending on display and video to get maximum efficiencies out of it. Sure, uh, fair points, that. Uh, Dr. Kunal, I'm, I'm not expanding the question, I just asked that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, can you talk about any new uh, strategy that you or your team uh, has experimented with lately, which kind of proved uh, really efficient uh, for you guys? Yeah, uh, there, there are multiple that I would like to name. Uh, and some have been covered. Uh, one, uh, uh, Simrit also mentioned about how Bevakuf has been leveraging uh, content. Uh, so so this happened during the first, pen, uh, first lockdown wave also, uh, that uh, people were consuming uh, the social media a lot more. Uh, and Bevakuf has a strength of uh, building an organic following of 6 million uh, people across Facebook and Instagram. Uh, and we did see that engagement going up. Uh, so at a time when commerce was down, uh, content became all the focus uh, that we had. And once we started seeing the result of content being much more than uh, uh, before also, uh, we always had those fruits from content, but now uh, they were multifold. So, uh, so, so we started focusing more on it. Uh, so, so content and entertaining people became one. The second thing that we started picking up, and I think it was uh, uh, more inspirational, where uh, globally also people were seeing, especially in China, people were seeing that video commerce uh, is becoming uh, a big thing. Uh, and, and now you can use video uh, um, for marrying your content with commerce, or even commerce is becoming more video-led. So that is one initiative on which we started focusing on, and that gave us good result. Uh, and for so so today uh, to give you some uh, some numbers, uh, if before pandemic uh, almost ninety five percent of the budget was more uh, image led uh, on advertisement, whichever form we did, uh, and five percent was video led. Uh, today uh, in the past twelve months we have come to a seventy thirty ratio uh, where thirty percent inventory uh, spend we do it is already uh, in video. And we believe this is just the beginning. This is going to be almost 80% in future. And we started small. Uh, we started small with some of the product showcases 
uh, in video uh, to leveraging some of the influencer content and now recently we made it big uh, we onboarded uh, rajkumar rao and sanyam lotra uh, did a celebrity led campaign so uh, all of us gave us a phenomenal uh, uh, response both in the brand uplift the perception of the brand to generating traffic for us uh and and uh, so video becomes a, a center theme for us and on lines of video uh, there is one uh, feature that we came out with uh, it's called b shorts uh, bevakuf shorts so it's a short version of the entertainment uh, entertaining content uh, and rather than just leveraging the the instagram reels or some of the third party tools right uh, we have started leveraging our own platform uh, so here also our belief is that uh, we were one of the earlier ones uh, we started in 2012 as one of the early direct to consumer brand in india Uh, and uh, and uh, but that was direct to consumer uh, commerce that was happening uh, we believe that there is going to be direct to consumer content also uh, today most of the brands uh, are creating content on social media for their audience the way they were creating commerce for on amazon uh, for their audience today we believe that they are creating so much content in influencers that with time they would want to be direct to consumer for content also and hence we made a feature uh, which is uh, a feed of content uh, which is um uh, aggregating and bringing all the content that we are creating with influencers with celebrities uh, for entertaining our consumers and bringing it on app and directly giving it to consumer so i think that direct to consumer content is going to be a wave uh, in the next decade and that's something where we want to be an early mover and that's we launched and we are seeing a phenomenal engagement over there that's a good idea i hope someone is listening and expands <laughs> to the idea as well uh Satvik Crypto is very new. Uh, a lot of education also goes hand in hand. Uh, what have you guys been doing on social media space? Uh, probably something that is helping you uh, get more set of clients, get more set of consumers on board. Yeah, I, th- I think like maybe two things I can mention here um, is yeah, I mean we uh, something that we were not doing uh, till twenty twenty March, and then after that we started doing is influencer marketing. right so uh, where we have the influencers talk about our brand uh, for the people and uh, they also introduce our various features of our platform and then they yeah j- j- just tag us and we do the required marketing around that to I mean to to get as much bigger exposure as possible and something that you know we, when we were uploading just videos on youtube and trying to push that around we we were, we were not getting more than uh, about 10000 views Uh, but once we have started this, we have actually seen that go more than hundred thousand uh, views in the next in the first one or two days itself, uh, which, which has quite helped us to get the uh, get the reach. And on the other side, I think Twitter Spaces, so so that has actually uh, really helped us to uh, talk to our customers uh, uh, more frequently. And we have also used Clubhouse, uh, I mean, more than a few times. And Uh, that as well it has brought the people i mean more closer with and and it works with like very short notice uh, generally I mean as compared to trying to do a seminar on online seminar or something like that so th- th- this is just like you know uh, very similar tuning to your podcast but just it's live uh, kind of thing so yeah so so th- these definitely have uh, helped us from Uh, what we were doing before and uh, now this has kind of you know synergy i guess so i mean uh, not that only one thing will help but these have helped the rest of other things we were doing including like content marketing and, uh, and being active on social media and such sure thanks good to see brands are using clubhouse uh, the way in, in you know very innovative ways uh, that's that's really good uh, samrit uh, 2021 was the year when you know uh, a uh, lot of data from past 15 16 months that you guys have collected uh told you about their brand about about their wants and about their needs okay uh what tools and metrics are you utilizing to stay on top of uh, that yeah no good point i i think it goes beyond the 18 month period right because it's not just about the ltv in this case it's about long tail insights and i think human behavior as much as it's evolved preferences broadly remain the same uh there are two things that we do rahul one is uh, one is that we are a product company at the end in the day right so we make things that you want to use uh and it's an always evolutionary piece so uh, we have a consumer insights team and what the team does is it takes very specific keywords so almost think of it as a very complex boolean search uh that is built into the system and what we do is we take very sharp insights in terms of keywords that people are searching for 
on our website and then we look at the journey that the customer is going through right um, and sometimes they don't match and that's where the interesting points come in which is when people are searching for something but they land somewhere else and they still end up buying uh, so that's an opportunity curve for us so we classify it under two things one is that we classify it under an opportunity curve where people will come in searching for something they will land at a completely different point but they still end up buying it so there's an opportunity for us to make that little less friction uh, as in make sure that there is less friction but also build build a product intervention there the second thing that we do is the scale curve so while there's an opportunity curve where we are looking at what future trends are the scale curve is what's really telling us what people want here and now and we unfortunately exist in a place where people come to our website they look at products and they go to an amazon or an i core or flipkart and you know they might end up buying it what we have started to do is to really sort of encourage people to buy more on the site by clubbing very specific things that they will not get in the marketplaces but not to descale the marketplace we give them things that they will not find on the marketplace which is gifting solutions customization solutions engraving solutions right these are things that they will not find in the marketplace uh, but for everything else they can go there so the customer journey has now become frictionless you can come to the website you buy what you think is a customizable option for you but for everything else there is an amazon button you can click on that and go off to amazon itself or a flipkart or nike however you want to do this right so make the journey as frictionless as possible understand where the heat map drops off drop offs are and then build very specific intervention points onto that uh, that's the first thing the second thing that we did is we uh, we put a very robust crm platform in place uh, we shifted from uh, just a straight up email system to we shifted to clavio which gives us a very strong customer journey and deeply integrated customer journey with the product piece uh, and that started to give us tremendous amount of return because we are able to now drive more benefit back to the customer uh, we also realized that our customer is not very happy to react to smss so we dropped that so that was another realization that happened uh, during covid where we realized that sms probably does actually it doesn't have the open rate that one assumed uh, that it would it was a lot less transactions are also happening so you don't sort of open up your phone that often right Um, so small little things which go on to tell us that how do you make it frictionless? How do you look at a long tail opportunity curve, and simultaneously keep building on the scale curve? And that's the only way that brands like us can sort of exist in an ecosystem which is so dynamically growing. Absolutely, those are some really uh, great initiatives that you have taken. Uh, Sudhir, uh, you know, I want to understand as a brand, how are you creating personalized experiences for your customers? uh to maintain a relationship basically which is uh, you know uh, because, because you see market is very cluttered you know uh you need to have direct relationship with your uh, uh, with your customers how are you doing that in the online landscape um as for us in gaming uh, i would almost go so far as to say that's the most important thing that we do right because uh, gaming is actually not so much about acquiring the user once but it's about once the user is acquired actually retaining them for a long time and it's a daily activity almost right so that's the holy grail when you get somebody who's playing every day for months right and you're on site and they prefer your site over everything else and in our case uh, there is actually deep data in the sense of uh, the number of interactions every single game that they play what they like playing who they play against etc etc so all that information comes in um what we try to do is uh, actually what we call mass uh, customization it sounds funny in a way but actually is it it, it actually does work it says that uh, uh, even if you're taking thousands or hundreds of thousands of users each of them feels like there is something which is customized for them which is being offered whether it's a promotion whether it's a discount code whether it's a, a particular game format leaderboard whatever that is Uh, but actually this is happening in a very automated seamless uh, way so how do you do that i mean that eventually boils down to the data and the analytics that you put behind that so over the last couple of years this is something that we have uh, built very much in house uh, and i think this is actually what now distinguishes us from many of our competitors in this space uh, so yeah that's i think what we need to keep building on as we go uh on the pure marketing acquisition side as well that becomes important but i think for me it's more about the what happens after the customer is onboarded so it's more the repeat targeting uh, which is happening in this way mass customization is something that i learned today uh so that uh, you know 2021 has been a year uh, you know when marketers kind of prepared for 
uh, you know, the end of third party cookies. The deadline has been extended, yeah, but this is a time where marketers will utilize this time to go beyond these third party cookies. You know, how are you helping your partners uh, deal with this change? Um, let's say in the upcoming cookie less future. I would, I would answer this in two ways, uh, Rahul. So one is, you know, very interesting insights from everyone in the panel. And I think what is, what I can uh, draw a common thread is that every brand is looking at who are my consumers already and then what do they look like and you know what do they want from me and how do i make their journey when they come to my brand more frictionless and then uh, you know customization i can do for them so uh, and and very rightly put by sudhir that their data analytics plays a very very important important role and the reason why i'm talking about this is because this is all first party data which every brand has uh, with them right uh, so uh, i think uh, the way we are also working with all our um, you know agency partners and with uh, the clients is that basically we are helping our brands to maximize their understanding of their own data first of all that is very very critical right for example if prabhakaran is say, talking about how can there be like a strategy for d2c for content uh, you know, uh, there can be a question that, you know, okay, who among the consumers who are coming on to the website uh, or onto the app, who are the consumers who are engaging more with the content, right? And what is their profile as compared to the overall profile of the consumer? So, you know, those kinds of things is where we are able to help because we have extensive data. We have our own data management platform in India and we uh, draw signals uh, which can be demographic signals, apography related signals. Uh, it can be offline signals also, offline brand affinities and so on. Contextual signals, what are they browsing on, what keywords they are looking at uh, and so on. So we, we collect uh, thousands of signals basically and we have data for 700 million consumers in India. So it's a very, very extensive data, but all GDPR compliant and no personally identifiable information. And then uh, matching it with uh, the first party data of the brand to provide them a complete opportunity map that, you know, okay, these are the different segments of consumers you have. And these are the profile. These are the consumers who prefer to buy from your own uh, website because of the smart bundling which you're doing or smart choices you're doing. But these are the profile of the consumers who come to your website, but then continue to go to marketplace and buy from there ultimately. So uh, a very, very rich understanding creates uh, you know, even more kind of uh, understanding of uh, the first party data which you have. And then from there, that is your most important tool to really look at how will you manage when the third party cookies are uh, disabled, right? That is one. Uh, second is uh, there are also a lot of other new channels which are coming up, which are, uh, you know, not dependent on cookies. And uh, if you look at, especially in the India market context, a lot of stuff happens on mobile. And mobile is still device ID related, right? So device IDs are not going anywhere. Cookies are also not going anywhere for two years. So there's still a lot of time for cookies as well. But there is not even a talk of device IDs going anywhere. And that's where actually 80 to 90% of the marketing happens uh, any which ways. So that is something which is going to remain. Apart from that, but of course, uh, MIQ is present in markets like US, UK, et cetera, as well. So we are doing a lot of stuff around uh, being prepared for third party cookies. So that's why we are also uh, uh, in those markets as well, we are investing in device ID related data as well as collecting a lot of contextual signals. And we are also activating a lot of new channels which are not dependent on cookies. Uh, and of course, some of these channels have become very big already like connected TV, digital out of home, uh, contextual creatives and so on and so forth. Uh, and of course, uh, what we also believe is that eventually there will be a consensus in the industry and uh, you know everyone will come up with a strategy where uh, you know for example google is talking about their flow strategy and of course as the deadline has been extended there will be changes in that strategy as well but i do feel that uh, uh, there will be uh, more choices given uh, right and uh, from a technology perspective things will also evolve because two years is a long time as well uh, but at, uh, and, and overall, it's, it's a good direction to take because privacy is a concern and uh, uh, eventually, uh, you know, identifying a particular person with a cookie uh, or, you know, associating a person's browser with a cookie and then uh, 
you know, having those privacy, um, you know, intrusions are obviously not good. And from that perspective, we definitely welcome uh, more things in this direction. And there are, and as I said, there will be more choices also coming in as technology moves. Thanks, Adolf, for simplifying uh, this a lot. Uh, I, I'll just ask Prabhkiran, uh, and then I'll go to uh, Satvik, Samrit, and then Sudhir in the same order. Uh, I wanted to understand from you guys, you know, uh, uh, what are the some critical KPIs that you measure your campaigns against? Um, we have uh, been evolving in a journey uh, where, uh, as a startup, uh, uh, when you're at a small scale, uh, each uh, marketing dollar counts and the result has to come today. Uh, so most of the spends and uh, campaign planning you do uh, is around uh, meeting uh, today's goal, meeting uh, the goal for this week, this month. Uh, and very rarely you, you have the opportunity to, to start thinking uh, what is going to help you three to five years down the line. Uh, so I think we, we have uh, evolved from there. Um, and, um, and 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 there the KPIs uh, would be. Uh, it was very much uh, ROS driven. Uh, if we are spending one rupees today, uh, we need to get five rupees uh, against that, and 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 that was the approach. Uh, from there, uh, right now we are looking at much longer funnels, uh, where um, uh, one is um, you're getting the revenue today, uh, but but then you start talking about uh, it's about the top funnel. Uh, how can you get more traffic? Uh, the people definitely come and and. Uh, uh, typically how the acquisition funnel would happen. And I think the third is uh, how uh, it evolves over time is you're more worried about uh, what's the perception of the brand. Uh, people might not be buying from you today, but the, the day they have a need, you should be the, the, the you should be top of the mind. You should be the first brand that they uh, reach out to. So I think it's uh, a pretty uh, traditional uh, in, in the sense that um, this is more fundamental. I think this has nothing to do with uh, the pandemic. Uh, uh, the thing with pandemic is we have been discussing a lot of things that have changed because of pandemic, uh, but I think a lot of discussion should be that uh, a lot of things are so fundamental, they don't change. Uh, what is it that is not going to change? And I think uh, typically on KPIs, I think the answer is the same, uh, where uh, these are the metrics that uh, we look at, and I think that has not changed uh, despite the pandemic. Sure, for you, KPIs haven't changed. Uh, Samrit, do you want to come in? Yeah, um, I agree with Prab. Uh, I, I don't think... Uh, yeah, nothing that's changed too much, honestly. At least, at least it's not a pandemic thing. Uh, things we do look at because we are across categories. Uh, we look at share of voice in the category. Uh, we look at share of media in the category. Uh, because we operate on e-commerce thing, we look at glance views uh, on e-commerce. We try to see how much share of voice do we have on the e-commerce piece itself. Uh, share of search becomes extremely important, especially when you are competing on a daily basis across very sort of me to similar skews. You need to be able to have share of search in that. Um, the way we buy media is to solve for both of these. Uh, we, of course, heavily bid on capturing search uh, to make sure that we are relevant across YouTube and Google and Facebook and so on and so forth. Uh, display then becomes another important media buying principle. Uh, and both of these, according to us, help solve for both the equity capture that we want, which is share of media and share of us, and the commerce capture, which is share of search and then share of category. That's probably the way we look at it. Fair enough. Uh, so, do you want to come in? I think for us, though, it's fairly traditional. And maybe I think, uh, as Prabhupada said, we're in the same zone where uh, kind of it's, it's ROS linked in a way. Uh, specific to gaming, I think for us, it, it kind of boils down to uh, people are sort of cost per registration, cost per active game. So somebody who's actually played a game on the side and then from there to a depositor. And we also then look at the conversion from one to the other uh, and source wise. So that's broadly how we will look at it. Uh, and this is for pretty much everything which is more acquisition or performance oriented. Um, and maybe for things like content or social, they will be looking much more at uh, just the quality of interactions that they're having with the brand. Uh, is it positive generally? Are the comments, etc., positive there? But very uh, obvious. I don't think it's changed much uh, post pandemic. Satvik has uh, crypto in any way uh, designed or defined new newer set of KPIs or are those the same for you? Yeah, I think the KPIs itself have not changed, but uh, on what we look for them, I mean, within them, uh, as, as, as quite little bit, I think uh, uh, we have seen 
uh, that to be the, it should, it's supposed to be a little bit higher so for example uh, let's say for for 100 people who are signing up the ones who will check out uh, to buy some cryptocurrency the first month and if it was about 25 percent and uh, now because more people are working from home and they have uh, less restrictions of uh, their own like how uh, how how they could you know invest in such things as well and keep an eye on different things etc and then there are working women uh, who are who are trying to invest in such. so so based upon these things i mean we have kept that bar to be about 35 percent uh, so we, we, we just quite uh, you know, gone up to say that, okay, this is the time when, when people actually diversify their investments at various uh, uh, things and such. But yeah, on the, on the other side, the customer acquisition cost as well, I think. So before we were quite fine to go up to like 2 to $3 um, as far as just reaching out to a particular customer is concerned, but uh, that has become much more competitive. And now uh, we, we try to maybe even reduce it to less than $1 uh, for, for reaching out. And on the other side, we also have, have understood that. So before how it used to be is uh, the people who, whom we are trying to target has some way, some kind of uh, relation to uh, doing the investments and buying stuff online and such. But now that we are kind of out in the wild and everyone is absolutely digital in nature, I think uh, the even though we are targeting 100 people, the, the real customer base that we can acquire forever would be, say, about 5% because they need to have disposable income, they should be risk covers, they should understand the regulations and such, and they should understand the volatility. And, uh, and it's like quite a few uh, challenges which... Uh, I mean, when you actually reach up to the common man, right? So they really need to be aware. So uh, due to this, uh, yeah, our cost per acquisition has significantly come down as far as reaching the customers itself is concerned. But on the other side, we are trying to compensate that by giving a welcome bonus of, uh, of, of a few dollars worth of cryptocurrency as soon as they sign in uh, and, and provide the KVC documents, get their account approved. So yeah, that, that, that's, that's kind of two things I think uh, uh, have slightly changed as compared to how things used to be before. Makes sense. Uh, all right. Before I move to my uh, closing question, everyone, uh, so Siddharth, if you can comment on some fundamental trends that you think will shape marketing uh, in the rest of the uh, through rest of the year and maybe beyond uh, beyond this as well in twenty twenty two as well. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I think again, you know, drawing from what uh, uh, panelists have said, right? So you know, KPIs uh, do not change and fundamentals of marketing. And how it should be measured did not change, uh, right? But I think what we are seeing is that one is uh, definitely a big rise in online video, right? That is something which has really happened. Um, a lot of people have either reduced the amount of traditional TV they are watching or cut the cord. A uh, lot of uh, consumers also stopped, uh, you know, getting newspapers in their house because of the pandemic and all those things as well. So that is. And that is a given and, you know, probably uh, these are the simple things which I'm talking about, which everybody knows, but good to reinforce that uh, because it uh, basically tells you that, you know, now the mediums have changed and now how should I uh, go back to my KPIs, but how should I measure it in a different way? Because I will need to navigate a new medium and then get the measurements back to my original KPIs, basically, right? So that's very, very critical. And um, I think the other... Uh, other thing which is really, really important, what I would say is that, uh, you know, to make this transition more successful, what we are doing is, uh, uh, you know, from a trend perspective is that, uh, right as rightly said by many panelists, there is a power in search, there is a power in social signals. So what we are doing is we are bringing in search and social signals and bringing into video and display. Uh, and I will just give an example is that like we were doing a campaign actually for a crypto exchange and what we did was we uh, used twitter signals to time uh, you know when the campaign should be at a high intensity depending on the twitter buzz of cryptocurrency uh, and uh, when we should not be spending too much because there is a dip in the twitter buzz uh, about cryptocurrency similarly we looked at the you know as consumers are browsing about cryptocurrency and as uh, rightfully put, you know, there's a lot of education which has to be going there. So we looked at search signals as well as behavior, browsing behavior signals. And again, kind of uh, looked at the timing in the right way. So what I'm trying to say is that we took social signals, search signals, combined them together and timed our campaign. And that created a lot of efficiencies on display and video, especially on video. 
because uh, display there is a lot of uh, banner blindness, but there is a lot of uh, stuff happening on video side now. Uh, OTT's consumption has gone through the roof. YouTube, obviously, consumption is going through the roof as well. Uh, so from that perspective, uh, there is a lot to be done on video and with the right signals taken into account, you can basically uh, have a good impact. And then from there, how do you measure the KPIs is by having advanced analytics, which is basically, you know, doing your path to conversion analytics, tracking how your different paths are working for you, which path is coming at the top of the funnel, which path is really helping in the lower part of the funnel and how they're interacting with each other. Uh, that is something which is very, very important combined with a better understanding of first party data. I think uh, I would say that probably we might be entering into actually uh, a very interesting era where not only we can do uh, more precise targeting from an audience understanding perspective, we can time it well as well, but we can also measure it because the digital touch points have become so, um, so prevalent in a consumer's journey and there can be a lot of measurements which can be done. Yeah. Right. Thank you, Sudhar, for that. Yeah, uh, Rahul, uh, with your permission, if I just wanted to add uh, something on this question on the fundamental change. Uh, so on fundamental change, I think there is one aspect under marketing, which is digital marketing, which we are talking about. Uh, I think they are just to summarize uh, uh, what Siddharth said, uh, it has accelerated. The adoption has accelerated, right? Uh, that's how I would put it. Uh, maybe that five-year adoption has just shrunk into two years. But I think there is one thing in marketing that uh, is something that every digital marketer and brand marketer uh, will have to be cognizant of uh, is that uh, uh, this event uh, is going to have a big change in the psychographic uh, um, psycho the, the, the psychographic profile of users. Uh, we have seen uh, such events uh, and, and were documented when they happened in the US. Uh, people who were young during the Great Depression behaved a certain way whole of their life. People who were born during the World War II uh, had a very different outlook to life versus people who were born in the 70s. I think this event, uh, which the entire world faced, is going to change the psychographic profile of the current Gen Z and the millennials for sure. Uh, all of them have gone uh, through something together. So I think some changes are going to be one is around uh, a lot of... Uh, um, so uh, one segment of the audience is going to be uh, focused on the affordability part. And that's something that digital marketers will have to look into because uh, some people did lose their jobs. Some people were affected. So them, for them, the job certainty is going to affect them. At the same time, people who are not affected are going to pay that extra premium on experience uh, because they are going to live by uh, YOLO, you only live once and will be able to extend. Uh, there's no, maybe there's no tomorrow and have a good time today. Third thing that we are seeing consistently is people are now actually focusing on sustainable. Uh, then people are focusing on health. Uh, those trends have emerged. And, and some of these trends are going to affect everyone, even if you're not in these segments and directly you're not associated. So that is going to be the way you communicate. It is expected. Uh, it is expected for brands to behave like humans, how you are behaving uh, and creating your uh, internal culture to how are you responding to the consumers. To give an example, you will see that uh, most of the bigger brands and digital companies, they, uh, while the second uh, wave was on, uh, everyone stayed away from doing any sale promotion, uh, doing anything that can uh, come out to be insensitive because there was something else that was, uh, there was a trauma that people were going through the second wave. Uh, so I think at that point of time, it was uh, expected and a lot of brands did it also. And that's something that we also changed during the pandemic was the communication. So we started something called a uh, message from the uh, CEO where uh, from me personally, a uh, message came that uh, things are going to be good soon. Uh, messages of hope, messages of optimism. So I think these are some things uh, that uh, are, have evolved and are going to be something that is not just today. Uh, a lot of things that have happened, they went down, they went up uh, during that those three, four months. The recovery was fast. But there's going to be a psychographic change uh, in the people who are young right now. And they are going to behave a certain way whole of their life from here. So uh, thanks, Prabhkaran, for your uh, views on this. Um, so while registering, uh, you know, to be notified for this, uh, whenever this uh, webinar goes live, one of the uh, registrant is Nikita Gupta. She asked, uh, what are the new trends that one should include in the marketing plan for 2021-2022? Anyone wants to voluntarily take that up? Or uh, you guys think this has been covered? I can add a couple of things uh, if it helps, Nikita. Um, 
I think one we need to start solving for voice a lot more. There is far more search happening through voice than it's happening uh, through text. Uh, it's just it's just very natural, right? I mean, we end up talking to Siri, we end up talking to Alexa, we end up talking to Google so much more. Um, you know, down south is a great example where uh, the text arbitrarily it's just not so easy to type out on a Unicode device, right? So. Um, I mean, as a marketer, if you're not making sure that your content is voice indexed and voice search friendly, uh, maybe you're just missing out on something. I think we've covered a lot of other things. So I'm not going into the basics. I'm just talking about things that we have not spoken about. Right? Yeah. Uh, search is critical. I think the other thing is just the regional content creation capacity. Right? Uh, it's not just enough to take an English piece of content and translate it into Bengali, Hindi, Gujarati, Marathi. It's not going to work. There's far too no, far too Central and nuance uh, to Indian languages and the way we speak, right? And the things we say. Um, I think marketers need to think in that language and the nuance of that region uh, rather than just start translating. Uh, till now, we have just been taking one television commercial and translating it. I think we need to stop doing that and get more real. Uh, people are different, cultural nuances are different. Um, yeah, I think we have spoken about media. Media, yeah. Is, yeah. media is definitely important. That's covered. But these are two things that I have to say. Right. Just yeah, adding on to the regional sure. part. Yeah, just adding on the regional part, what some uh, somebody brought up. I, I think uh, it was a realization for most of the D2C brands, which have been operating like uh, one store and one economy. Uh, there is one uh, store you have and uh, you are catering to entire India and internet product opportunity. But I think uh, that regional um, being different uh, India is uh, in a way, uh, some of different countries, uh, all states operate differently was a reminder um, when the lockdown rules, which internet companies are not have not been used to, they have not been operating like regional country, uh, companies. Was so that uh, different states are in lockdown at different point of time, uh, so and and were operational at different point of time. So I think that also was a reminder and an opportunity. If anyways you have a different uh, reach out uh, to different uh, states during this uh, time, then uh, better have content which is uh, customizable. So I think uh, that also played as a good reminder to all of us. Absolutely, Prabhkaran. So, uh, yeah, right. just, can I just add quickly two points? Uh, of course, of course, Siddharth, sure. Yeah, so I think, uh, you know, uh, it's this is a time to really take a step back. And I completely agree with uh, what Prabhkaran said that, you know, there's a huge change in consumer outlook. So uh, you might be seeing that your business is going on, you are getting revenue, everything, right? But you need to take a step back and see what is my consumer profile whether it has changed, uh, you know, and things like that. So, uh, and, you know, analyzing first party data and, and enriching it, that is one piece of the equation. There could also be other pieces of equation as well. Looking at your current, uh, you know, website traffic as well as app traffic and analyzing trend from there as well. It could also be like an offline survey also you can do, but you have to really get a sense of how my consumers have changed. Uh, and the profile of the consumers, the opportunity map, everything, you know, it, and you might be surprised uh, a lot, uh, actually, uh, right? That is one. And secondly, I will, uh, uh, you know, quickly add here is that there is not only a trend of regionalization, which we have seen, but also hyper localization, um, because uh, there are a lot of things which consumers are very concerned about nearby. Uh, and I think that's also a big trend, which which is going to come up. Uh, and it is again linked to my first point as well that first understand your consumer and then understand from a location perspective what are the trends which are emerging for your consumers and then from there you can create a more uh, informed strategy. So that makes sense. So do you want to add something? Yeah, no, just a small point. I think uh, see one of the effects of the lockdown has been that uh, obviously with people being locked in their own houses, the level of interaction with people outside has just dropped, right? So whether it's kids who are not able to meet their friends in school or whether it's uh, parents, people who are not able to meet their colleagues at work, um, I think there's a feeling of being cut off. And I think uh, the, uh, the corollary to that is there's a lot of emphasis, I think, in the next year, which will be actually on building communities or avenues for people to interact. So especially in the gaming context, we see that a lot where say something like a Fortnite, where you're playing with your friends and at the same time you're talking to them live as you play right. And that gets that group together. So in poker, we did the same thing where we actually integrated voice chat on the table itself. So on private tables. So you're playing with your friends and you can actually talk to them live. 
And that has a huge impact in terms of retention of all of those people. Uh, because you, you build that field. Um, I, I really like something which Prabhkiran said earlier today that where uh, they're uh, putting out content or video on their own app now rather than trying to put it on YouTube uh, and actually trying to build that. Uh, I mean, it's again a way of keeping the customer on your site and actually giving them a feeling of belonging to something larger. And I think this is something that if more people can crack, it will help them obviously have much higher retention, which obviously then reduces your acquisition costs over time. So all of that, uh, I think... Uh, Will, will be anything coming up. I, I think uh, it, it, it will be more about, see, uh, when multiple uh, brands or companies are, are trying to fight for a single customer, it always comes down to who is doing something distinguishing, right? So, and now things are moving more and more digital. Uh, everyone more or less have access to a similar set of tools um, about how they learn. Uh, I mean, before, it, at, at least at physical level, uh, the measurement was somewhat difficult, uh, but when it comes to digital, then it's it's like every pinpoint is uh, measurable and uh, trackable, and you can you go from one stage to one stage. I mean, you, you exactly know like how, uh, and and it's same for everyone. So I think the the distinguishing factors uh, going forward would be more in terms of like how do you some kind of provide uh, uh, human touchness uh, to the customer, and how do you keep them more interactive. Uh, make your customers interacting with one another, etc. I mean, now we, we, you know, like word of mouth is one of the uh, strongest thing. But now people are not really like meeting each other and such. And if it is more about uh, brands which are more physical in nature, they they don't get to uh, see it so often uh, for the next couple of years at least because you know the the events where it needs to really you know come out are uh, aren't really you know taking place. So, so I think it's it's about distinguishing. How do you? I did it. Could could be a crazy idea. How do you? How do you distinguish yourself? Is uh, is what I think will be one of the major factors. Uh, is my opinion. Yeah. So thanks, Satvik, and uh, thank you, Sudhir. Uh, basically, in my opinion, uh, 2021 will be the year of uh, continuing uh, digital transformation, where uh, marketers will need to continuously track. Uh, trends and indicators and rework their strategies in the data-driven world. Yeah. Uh, it will also be important to take some bold steps and make changes in marketing investments uh, in order to survive the rest of 2021 and beyond. Uh, on that note, uh, thanks a lot, uh, Subhir, uh, Samrit, Prabhkiran, uh, Siddharth and Satvik for joining in today. Uh, for this uh, virtual panel discussion. Uh, it was really great having you all here.